I'm here at the Divertimenti Culinary Salon with Sabrina Gayor and her beautiful book. Thank you. know how you. I love the texture of this. I know. Tiziana, which got the huge award. I'm I know. For the monthly cookery book of the year. I'm like very blown away by it because you don't really sit down and think you're the first book you're ever going to write. You're just too busy thinking, somebody read it, please. So I'm thrilled. It's uh, amazing. It's I mean, that huge. is quite the accolade. For us, for in our industry in the UK, it's like the Oscars, I think. It is, it I, is. I would always watch it like it was, so. Uh, but this book is fantastic and people love it because the you. recipes are great, but you're writing about what inspired you and, and everything else about them is so lovely too. It's a, it's a perfect combination. Thank you. It's, um, it's kind of not the authentic, Middle Eastern voice. It's kind of the voice of, well, I grew up here, but there's, you know, all this wonderful produce that you have here and mm. like really simple stuff in your cupboards and together, you know, when they meet, really easy, simple, but delicious things can happen because I, I kind of always have that argument that we all have at home in our minds like, oh, should I phone for a takeaway or, <laughs> you know, rifle through the cupboards? Yeah. You know, it's that. Should I phone for a takeaway, spend, what, 20, 30 pounds or should I tip this into this and I've got a little bit of this in the fridge and I've got potato? Yeah, I'll knock something up. It works. It is. And it just helps you use stuff in the house a little bit more. So, But it's interesting, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the topic of the evening, which is food and memory, because it feels like you draw on a lot of food memories. And then there's a bit of a twist that occurs there as well. Yeah. Um, and I guess that was, I decided to make a conscious decision I didn't want to write the authentic Middle Eastern food bible because I think especially based in the UK you know we're very lucky especially in London you know we really do know quite a lot about Middle Eastern food um, and I just thought it had been done beautifully by so many amazing people like Claudia Roden like Otto Lenghi you know real legends and Nisa Halu and I didn't want to do that I wanted to do kind of like mixing it up flavors wise um, in your own home using ingredients that you are familiar with and some that you're not as familiar with but you're not going to be going around the houses looking for um, and so this kind of style of just bunging and chucking as I call it at home. Um, <laughs> That's the technical term. It is. I'm chucking. a bunger and a chucker. My, and my boyfriend always says, oh, you're a bunger and a chucker. And I'm like, yeah, I am. Because that's, we are chaotic at home. You know, I cook professionally. That's not how I cook at home. I don't take as much pride and care when preparing something for myself as I would for a client because that's just not the nature. We, we, we're distracted. We have to shower. We have kids. We have lives. So it's just kind of my, my everyday style is literally banging and chucking things together with a degree more confidence because you know I'm Middle Eastern so I'm a little bit more familiar with spices and like large quantities of herbs I'm like yeah of course I like it this mm -hmm. tastes good with this cool and it works well I mean the great the, one of the great things is that it gives the reader the home chef kind of permission to have fun and to not feel so constricted that no. they're gonna mess up which you can feel sometimes I, th I think for me, cookery books, I've always taken what I wanted from them. And in my adult life, I was quick to realize people feel terrified by, you know, rigidity and, oh my God, I don't have dried apricots. I only have dried prunes. Oh my God, all the shops are closed. And, you know, they really actually... The world is ending. They, they you yeah. know, but that, if that's valid. And yeah. I guess that's representative of a lot of people. And if I said, oh, well, it doesn't matter. You know, if you don't have apricots, do you like prunes? You have prunes, use prunes. Yeah. You don't have, um, you know, peas, use edamame. Whatever you like. If you like it, it works for you, then use it. It's going to be great. And I think it's about showing people that recipes should always just be a really good guideline, apart from baking, except for baking. <laughs> baking needs to be to the tooth, but a good recipe for your average sort of savory type mm. of dish should just be whatever you have, you know, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of good ingredient, a little bit of faith, um, and just to produce something really simple and delicious. You don't really need to chuck 500 ingredients mm. at something. It just if you like it, then it's more likely to be good enough to serve to other people. I think people are scared of trusting their own judgment. I think that's an, a, an excellent point and a great philosophy. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you, thank thank you, you so for much. Us at the culinary salon. Thank you.